The idea of bringing wheeled vehicles into World of Tanks was first considered in the very beginning of the game's development in 2010 or maybe in 2011. Back then, we had an enormous number of concepts for making the gameplay more varied and for adding new vehicle types. But it's only in 2016 when we managed to implement the Lanchester wheeled armored vehicles in the 100 Years of Tanks event. These cars were compact, speedy, and agile, and the community liked them a lot. So we decided to continue prototyping armored vehicles for the current state of the game. In this video, we'll show you the initial results of this project using the example of the French armored car, the Panar. With wheeled vehicles, our main objective was to bring active spotting back into the game. Many of you may remember the T-52 tank, which was fun to play. It could roll between adversaries and stay mostly unscathed. This light tank was a paragon of active spotting. With armored cars, we wanted to build something like the T-52, but for higher tiers. Choosing a nation wasn't easy, because such vehicles were made in the USSR, Great Britain, Germany, and France. We chose the French, because they had a really long affair with armored cars. The French roster is rich and has enough vehicles for a complete branch. Also, France has an ideal candidate for testing the game mechanics for wheeled vehicles, the Panar. The French didn't suddenly start making full-blown armored cars. They started with small things, like putting machine guns onto common cars. In the 1930s, light armored cars appeared, able to reach speeds of 70 kilometers per hour and above. The Panar 178 is an example of these. Its various modifications were in service until the 1960s. In the late 1940s, a star was born, the eight-wheeled Panar EBR. Its forward and rear wheels had bulletproof rubber tires. The four middle wheels were made of steel and had cleats for better traction. They could be lifted up on a paved road and put down on the ground on hard terrain. There were several models of the Panar EBR. The most well-known of them sported the oscillating turret of the AMX-13 tank. Over the course of 20 years, some 1,200 of these armored cars were made. They traveled beyond France, far and wide. The armed forces of Indonesia and Mauritania still employ them. Let's move from the history of the Panar EBR to its gameplay features and see what makes it stand out among other vehicles on the field of battle. The Panar is an exciting and interesting vehicle for World of Tanks. Formerly, it's a light tank with class bonuses to camo on the move. Even the matchmaker sees it as an LT and sets it against light tanks when composing teams to shorten the queue time. But this armored car feels and plays very differently from LTs, providing a fresh and unusual experience. Wheeled vehicles' primary function on the battlefield is active spotting. They are constantly moving, showing their allies where the enemies are. Their secondary function is eliminating solitary targets like unescorted heavies and, of course, artillery. Let's start with the most obvious differences. As the Pinar has wheels, not tracks, it needs to be on the move to be able to turn. But it can accelerate really quickly. Some wheeled vehicles' reverse speed will be equal to their top speed. In our game, the Panar has two movement modes, drive and default. Like its real prototype, the vehicle has four axles. Two of them can be retracted or lowered down when needed, hence the two modes of movement. In drive mode, the four middle wheels with cleats are up, allowing you to travel at over 100 kilometers per hour. In the open, the Panar can quickly cover great distances. No light tank is able to chase it in drive mode. While in default mode, the Panar can reach speeds of up to 70 km per hour and handles as well as a light tank. This mode is for urban zones and rough terrain, and for running circles around your enemies. Switching between the modes is simple. Just press X once to get into the other mode. You can do this on the move or while standing still. Wheel vehicles' suspension systems differ greatly from those of tracked ones. Armored cars are less prone to overturning while maneuvering than tanks. Different chassis interact with terrain in different ways. Wheel vehicles receive less damage when landing, making rapid and aggressive play possible, even on very jagged ground. 
Like other wheeled armored cars, the Pinar is swift in both modes. It's hard to aim at, and it's even harder to hit. Most importantly, it's very difficult to immobilize. Tracked vehicles, caterpillars, can be taken out in one shot. With wheeled ones, this is impossible, because every wheel is independent. You'll need more than one hit to pin an armored car down. With each successive wheel damaged, the armored car will slow down more and more, but it will still be able to move, which is good because speed is your only hope when you have a small HP pool and next to no armor. Yet, you can immobilize a wheeled vehicle by damaging more than half of its wheels or its engine. A repair kit is a much-needed thing because it restores all wheels to a working state at once. Compared to a track, it takes longer for your crew to repair wheels. One more interesting feature that increases your chances of survival is the charge. The car is revving up with brakes engaged, then with brakes released, it lurches forward rapidly. This allows you to start off promptly or to cross some dangerous gap in cover. Charge can also make you harder to target for enemies with slow turret traverse. We're still working on balancing this feature. We're not sure yet if we should go with a limited number of charges, engine overheating, or make the charge a consumable. Testing will help us find the best solution. Using the auto aim at high speed is not easy. It's shaky. Your enemy's silhouette isn't getting any bigger. So we devised the so-called lock-on feature for wheeled vehicles. With it, you lock onto your target, not only by clicking on an enemy's silhouette when your reticle is on it, but also by clicking close to it. In this way, locking onto someone is more likely. Please note that the auto-aim cannot lead your target, doesn't work in sniper mode, and doesn't fire by itself. It is fairly obvious that the full potential of fast vehicles unlocks on open maps. They give more space for maneuvers, more choices, and more survivability. So armored cars will be able to truly shine where there's enough driving space. Wheeled vehicles are best suited for active reconnaissance. This means not just lighting up enemies within your spotting distance, but also harassing them. Making an opponent move or attack can be very beneficial for your team. Enemies may abandon good positions or expose themselves. Armored cars can perform quite well in short distance fights. First, their speed and handling allow them to run really tight circles around their opponents. Second, they have small frames, and tanks with turrets sitting high will have problems hitting them at close range. Of course, top performance in close quarters actions can be achieved in the open. On city maps, wheeled vehicles have fewer tactical options. Engaging drive mode makes little sense. You are very likely to take a wrong turn and get slowed or destroyed outright. As a wheeled vehicle operator, your primary concern should be surviving, especially at the start of a battle. Dashing from cover to cover should help here. As the fight progresses, you may try provoking and flanking enemies. In the end, you should prowl for lonely targets like the nimble and fast predator that you are. As you can see, the armored car's battle objectives are the same as those of light tanks. It's the approach that is different. Soon, we'll launch the super test for the Pinar. In the first round, we are going to fine-tune its stats. We want to check the mechanics and see how this armored car interacts with other vehicles and the maps. We'll fully concentrate on that, leaving the stats for another time. Sure, there are lots of questions yet to be answered. How will this vehicle play? From where in the tech tree will it be researched? What other armored cars will be in the branch? And how will the matchmaker work with them? We'll do our best to address these in the next video. You're welcome to expand the set of questions in the comments section for this video. See you next time and best of luck in battle!